It's a crisp winter's morning in Bundaberg, several hours drive north of Brisbane. The sun is beaming across the Burnett River. Sugarcane harvesters are working in overdrive. On the way to the mill, cane trains hold up traffic as they pass by the old soft drink factory where tourists can get a taste of some famous local brews of the non-alcoholic kind. Now, when you taste this one, hold it in your mouth for a moment. But that one's really interesting. That one's me. Yeah, that's nothing. And that one's definitely that kind of island vibe. The Flemings have owned the soft drink business for more than 50 years. Originally Electra Breweries, Neville and Gladys Fleming, with their son Cliff and his wife Lee, bought it in 1968. Their daughter Ray Lee remembers how they used to prepare the ginger for the drinks. Dad tells the story how he used to get the ginger and actually have to, he put it in muslin, and had to actually crush the ginger to get um, it broken down. And my grandfather and my father did all the brewing. Um, there were two other staff members who assisted them and my grandmother and mother, um, they weren't there all the time, but they um, helped out with different jobs that needed to be done at that stage. The distinctive bottle was a recycled stubby washed and refilled with their own ginger beer. I can remember though, sitting on my grandmother's knee, watching the bottles go by, a screen that you check for imperfections in the bottle. So at that stage we were doing the real recycling where we'd get the old stubby bottles, which was a Forex stubby, and we'd collect them and um, we'd then rinse them and have to check that everything was fine for them to go through the line. So I used to sit on her knee and do that job. Rebranded as Bundaberg Brewed Drinks in the 90s, it launched a sparkling soft drink range in 2010. There have been many different flavours trialled over the years. My favourite is this one. It took us nearly four years to get that. This kept coming home. The family used to try things and John is bringing home new ones and we go, no, no, this is not right. Too syrupy, no, send it back. And then one day he brought home that and it was just perfect. Yes, that's my favourite. As many ingredients as possible are sourced domestically. When it comes to ginger, it must be the Queensland Gold variety. Clinton Crust is in the middle of harvesting at Mount Sylvia in the Lockyer Valley, an hour west of Brisbane. The crop takes 12 months to grow, and this year has seen challenges with a shortage of workers and wet weather. In a year like this year where we've had lots and lots of rain in the summer, we are seeing a lot of hot spots of disease, and if that continued, it could basically set in to the uh, ginger and ruin a crop, but thankfully we've stayed dry enough that that hasn't happened. Most of the harvest is done by hand. 200 tonnes is destined for Bundaberg and the rest for the fresh food market. All up together we've been growing ginger um, in Queensland for 50 years and without that family knowledge of what to do and how to do it and when's the perfect timing we wouldn't be where we are today with ginger and um, the opportunities that we have with the customers that we supply. Near the North Burnett town of Mundubra, 200 kilometres southwest of Bundaberg, backpackers are busily picking in a rare orchard of ripening blood oranges which are grown only for the local brewed drinks. It's hard work, but grower Rod Sharp says it's rewarding. It's an iconic brand. Uh, I enjoy um, supplying them. Uh, I was on a recent trip overseas and uh, cracked open a blood orange drink. It was pretty uh, surreal to think that uh, part of that come off my farm. So Bundy's been a supporter and that's why I've kept doing what I'm doing. Soft drinks require sugar, and Bundaberg, in the heart of cane country, has it in abundance. But CEO John McLean says some ingredients are much harder to come by. We try to source in Australia where we possibly can in the first instance, but then you get some really bizarre ones where you think we'd be able to get pineapple juice in Australia, and we can't. We have to get pineapple juice from Thailand. So, you know, it's sometimes what we think is logical, we can't get. 
Central Queensland University's Professor of International Business, Kwamrul Alam, believes the relationships with local growers and the community is pivotal to the company's success. Sustaining this huge supply chain network and ensuring quality product is not a very easy task. But as a regional company, Bundaberg Brewery has been doing extremely well, creating jobs, generating income, and providing services to many community people. So from that point of view, I think it is fascinating. And being a regional company, it has reached 60 different international markets. Last year, the company opened a $150 million master brewery, despite the temptation to move their expanding operations into state or overseas. Obviously, we had to do all of our, our numbers before investing. And there was a very strong case to not be in Bundaberg. But I've got to say that from day one, Bundaberg has supported our family and our family wants to support the region. And we've been, a, we've been supported by the region to get to where we are. We didn't feel as a family it was the right thing to walk away from the region at that period of time. So we've decided to invest our money in, into the Bundaberg region and uh, keep employing over 250 people. Blink and you'll miss it. This production line is capable of filling 51,000 bottles every hour. They're then packaged and distributed across the country and the world. Most of the equipment for this extensive operation has been imported. All of the production floor came from Germany and that was came across in 80 containers and 80 skids. And um, good thing that boat didn't go down. Um, but we got that all in and then the brewery was an amalgamation and we had a lot of engineers on site for about eight months, welding everything together, and that was controlled and coordinated by an Australian company. Despite their success in exporting to more than 60 countries, Bundaberg Brew Drinks has committed to keeping their core operations here. It's a decision that's mutually beneficial to the company and to the region. Succession planning has already started, with the fourth generation entering the business. For Ray Lee, it's a full circle moment, seeing her children become more involved. You're a bit gung-ho when you're young, I suppose, and it's so it's very interesting being on the other side of it as the parent rather than a child, because I can remember being the child and now I'm the parent where they have all the solutions. <laughs> and always can do it better than yourself. But um, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to um, have that closeness in a family through a business. A family that shares a love of their hometown and everything it has to offer. Bundaberg's where we live. Bundaberg is a name that we borrow from the town. And it brings so much joy to have Bundaberg put on the map in the world for us. It brings our family joy. I know it brings people from Bundaberg great joy. And even now I'm seeing people from all over Australia will say to us, I saw Bundaberg um, in some country somewhere. So to have that, that pride in our city that we can actually um, showcase it to the world.